G'day guys and thanks for uh, watching this Mini X uh, introduction to draw reel. Uh, the basis of the shoot is going to be to get the equipment installed in the aircraft and um, you know go through the procedures of how to get it uh, ready for the first flight. Uh, there was <laughs> there was some um, tutorials online that I saw. Uh, one in particular was from an Arab country and it was pretty crap. Uh, he just flew through it and I thought I'm going to actually put one together that people can actually see what's happening and uh, step through some of the more important aspects because a lot of it was just glanced over. So, like I said, I hope you really find this useful. Everybody likes an unboxing. Um, I thought we'll start with that. There you go. That's how I unbox everything. It's all done. Let's just quickly go through the components. Um, there is the OSD, which is really good because it's actually quite small. So there's my thumb for a perspective the flight controller and lastly the the GPS module that that comes with it uh, there's also um, a bag full of cables that um, will be used to hook everything up so we'll step through that um, in the next few minutes all right let's look at the connections into the Mini X flight controller uh, in the instruction manual uh, there is a good visual diagram of how everything connects together um, but let's just quickly go through it um, in real life. Through the connections on the side, uh, the first one that's presented is the battery. And the cable for that is this one here with the JST on the end of it. Uh, just plug in the battery as such. Simple as that. The second one is the SBUS input. <clears throat> now the SBUS input is specifically for Futaba type receivers, but it also does support uh, PPM inputs from receivers such as an Immersion RC Easy UHF and that's what I'll be using for my aircraft. Um, the cable for that is this one here and that would go into the SBUS port just there. The next connections are labelled as out, um, they're for the motor inputs. Uh, they supply us uh, some cables such as these ones here and what they have is one input to two outputs uh, and that's so that uh, you can either configure it in a quad formation with just one of these or if you use both of these you can go all the way up to the hex so in other words it'll support from four six and eight type configuration um, that's also seen in the manual here so that's that's representative of um, the types of um, hex oh, sorry the, the types of um, copters that it will support all the way from four um, up to an eight octocopter or an X8 so um, you know top and bottom motors. Uh, we won't connect those in now but um, one important thing that I've read is that you don't use the positive rail onto this because we've got the battery input already and uh, what I'll do is um, I'll be pulling off the red lead and just putting in the um, ground and the signal wire to, to this input. The, the next input that comes in is the OSD. So we saw before that it's a nice little unit um, and that's the cable that's used for it. It's um, When you plug in, in the OSD the cable actually runs horizontal to the OSD and you'll see in the um, diagram on the OSD itself that uh, it's represented in the, t the top and so I've plugged it into the top and left the two bottom ports for the video in and video out. Uh, that goes into the first port, uh, so that's all keyed, can't get that wrong. And lastly is connectivity of the GPS. So once again it's got a connection that's keyed and uh, that goes into the second port on the unit itself, uh, like so. So I want to just talk to you about the ESCs and how I mentioned before that we need to take out the positive rail which on a typical ESC is the middle pin so you'll have your signal, your positive and the black. Now if we look at the way that they've actually done the harness that I mentioned before which is you know the, the one that provides uh, connectivity for four all the way up to an octocopter you'll see that uh, the signal pin is up the top still um, in, a, in a traditional manner and the black is at the bottom in a traditional manner but what they've gone ahead and done is also tapped the 
um, middle pin, which is normally the, the power, as I mentioned, and they're using that to, pre to be able to provide the um, signal to uh, motors 5, 6, 7 and 8. So that, that's why it's really important that we actually remove the um, power rail out of the ESCs um, if you're going to connect them in. So if we look at one of the ESCs, this one happens to be um, ESC number 3, I've actually gone ahead and removed that power rail and I've just taped it up the back here so it's out of the way. Um, and then that's the negative rail and the signal as I mentioned, uh, which equates to you know, exactly the same format um, from that uh, other connector that we had before. So not that it's really relevant to this project, but um, I just wanted to show you the aircraft that I'm going to put it in. This is uh, an overquad with a gimbal, and uh, I really wanted to put this Mini X into this aircraft um, because of the position hold and the return to home functions that it's got. And uh, what I had to do was do some modification to the unit um, around the plate where the Mini X is actually going to reside. Um, because uh, reading in the forums it seems like uh, the Mini X is a bit susceptible to um, vibration spikes. So what I've done is I've gone and put um, a number of these uh, little vibration dampeners in there and I've got a plate that's sitting there which the Mini X will then sit on. Here's a close up of that plate you can just see here that it's uh, sitting on those vibration dampeners and I've uh, given it a bit of a large plate so that I can put the Bini X and I think even the OSD up the front here somewhere. So we, we've been through the fact that uh, you need to remove the, the power rail and as you can see here I've gone ahead and done that to all, all my four and then it's now just a matter of plugging them in with the earth up the top or the neutral and the signal wide uh, down the bottom, so it's just a matter of them one, two, three, and four. Uh, these don't have any locating pins, but that's not a problem because uh, it seems to fit in fine. So I went ahead and labeled everything, so that's number four, and that's number three, and it's all sequential. So one goes to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. There we have it. And then that will get pushed up into here. So now that we have all the connections hooked up, um, I've got the battery lead which will um, connect into here, into my JST, giving me um, the ability to pick up the battery voltage. So the input on the battery is anything from 2S to a 6S and I've routed my um, PPM wire to my Easy EHF which is going to sit up in the back here and all that's left to do is install the unit with the arrow pointing in the forward direction of motion of flight so we just need to make sure that it does go in in that direction there. So I've just gone ahead and I've installed the GPS unit you know, just affixed it to the, the top um, as I mentioned that the Mini X has been installed with the arrow pointing forward in the direction of flight and if you look just in there I've also placed the OSD just up front um, with the connection to the cameras. Okay after you've uh on and put all the equipment into your aircraft um, it's time to do some basic configuration. This is actually quite a, a simple um, configuration tool that happens. Um, the calibration that comes afterwards is a little bit more complex but um, what you need to do is turn on your transmitter, plug in the flight battery into your um, quadcopter and through the USB interface on the uh, Mini X flight controller, plug it into your computer. So I'll just do that right now. Um, I'm just running VMware. So, and you heard that uh, the ESCs went into a kind of calibration mode. Now we'll open up the folder on here, and there's a Mini X executable. So we'll run that executable and we'll go through each page. 
Okay, the first page is basically uh, kind of like your PID settings. Um, in my case, because I've already flown this quadcopter, um, I found oscillations at uh, the default settings, which are all set to 1. Um, I dropped these down to 0.8 for pitch and roll, and that's basically knocked out my um, oscillation that I had found, and it gives me quite stable flight. Um, there's also a low voltage safe. I, um, I've ticked it because what will happen is it'll start to warn you when the voltage is um, getting low and when it's critical. So in other words, at, um, at 3.6 volts from memory, it'll give you a warning. And then at 3.5 volts, it'll give you a, a heightened warning that uh, your battery's um, getting low. Uh, the next one is the safe parameters. So in other words, how are we going to do return to home in case of a, a fail safe or a manual fail safe? Um, there's four options here. Um, we can return to home with the tail in and all return to home with the nose in. The other thing, the other two options we've got is we can just sit there and hover and the hovering of course will be at that 15 metre height, that offset. Or we can just come in and just do a landing in the position that we are. Um, in my case I've just said let's just do a tail in, return to home. Models, this is where you can configure the type of aircraft that you've got. Um, a normal quadcopter is this one here. Uh, what's noteworthy here is that uh, the engine, the motor configuration is probably different to traditional NASE and open pilot boards. Um, whereas we've got motors one, two, three, and four here. So refer to the manual um, when you're actually hooking them up to make sure that you've got the right positions for the right motor um, for the right configuration as well. But um, it has all options up to octocopter in a plus. Now, one thing that I want to mention here is the ESC type. I had set it to Ultra PWM ESCs, thinking that's what we needed for uh, Simon K flashed ESCs. Uh -uh, that was wrong. That took me hours to work out what I had done wrong because the aircraft wouldn't arm. Um, and so when I put it back to normal ESCs and I went and armed the aircraft, bang, straight away it worked. So um, in short, normal ESCs or even Simon K ESCs, please just use a normal ESC um, radial button. The OSD, once again, very simple. Uh, you can select PAL or NTC on your own favour. Um, and it, uh, you can select what type of battery. So it'll take from 3S up to 6S. Um, and that'll come up on the screen, of course. And the other thing, because this is a gimbal squad style quad, what I've done is I've selected gimbal quad. So in other words, the AH will sit um, horizontal and everything else will rotate around it. Or if you're in normal FPV style, then you want the AH to start moving around um, with your position. So in this case, it's gimbal. And lastly, this is where you actually do um, the upgrade software. So uh, this will take you off to their website. You download the two configurate well, sorry, one configuration file and one hardware or firmware file, um, and then it's just a matter of putting um, those two files into here and booting the aircraft um, from a, a power down situation. Um, it will then load the software and uh, it'll be updated, and then it's just a matter of running the right executable for it. So in this case, um, you know, I've got firmware 1.02 and I think it's um, 1.05 for the configurator. Um, and that's it, you know, unless you want it in Chinese language, which I'm not good at. Um, and that's all there is to the um, uh, configuration tool. Um, by the way, everything is dynamic within this configuration tool. So as you do the, the changes, it's, it's sent to the uh, flight controller. Um, and then to get out of it, it's just a matter of shutting everything down and what I do is I just eject it as well to be safe. Um, and that just gives me uh, security that everything's done properly. The other thing to note is when you pull out the USB, you'll get a different pitch on the ESC. So I'll listen out for that now. And there we go. We're, um, we're completed for doing uh, our configuration through the configuration tool. Okay, now we're going to do the calibration stage of the configuration. So what we need to do is basically, um, to get into a configuration state, we have to change this light from blue to purple. 
the first one we're going to do is the compass calibration and to enter the calibration mode what we need to do is uh, quickly switch channel 5 while having the throttle at half mast. Mode. So we, there mode. we go. Mode. It's now mode. entered into calibration mode. Um, the next state is that we need to um, get a solid green lead by reducing Ratitude the throttle mode. and switching mode. it mode. quickly. Mode. Mode. So once again we've got a solid green lead. It's now a matter of picking it up and it will start to blink quickly when I do that and we have to start to rotate it. So we'll do that, there we go, it started to blink. So we'll slowly rotate it to commence the calibration mode. And at one point what will happen is it will go blue. What that means is we need to, there we go, there's the blue, we need to turn the aircraft over and start rotating it again in this orientation until we get a solid green lead. There we go, and we've got the solid green lead now. To complete the process, turn it off and we're done. That's now been saved for the compass The next mode. calibration that we need to do is the RC neutral point. Um, this one's a bit easier to do, there's nothing involved in picking up the, um, the unit. But what we need to do is basically, uh, once again, get into calibration mode. And we do that by, mode. as I said, mode. flicking mode. channel 5. Mode. Mode. And uh, now what we need to do is bring the throttle up to halfway. There we go, it's on halfway. We should have a green and then to Ratitude make it take we mode. keep flicking Ratitude the channel 5 mode. Mode. so we keep uh, flicking channel 5 until we get a solid green lead uh, for it to take all we need to do is power off to save the configuration we're done right the last calibration that we need to do now is the RC reverse calibration so um, once again we'll get into uh, the purple configuration mode, mode. And there we go it's um, flicking purple so what we now need to do is put the sticks up to the top there's the green and we need to flick this until we get a solid green lead Excellent. So now we've got the solid green lead displayed, power it off, and the configuration saved. That's the end of all the calibration stages that we, um, we have. Just to finish up, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Um, the first one really is that uh, there's two ways to be able to power up the motors um, from a start position. The first thing that I've noticed is that um, it has to be in manual mode as they call it so in my case that's with my switch all the way up and you can start the motors by towing in or towing out either one will start the motors if you don't accelerate within the first three seconds the motors stop and the other thing that we've um, has been talked about on the forums and I've noticed as well is that if you bring your throttle, throttle back all the way to idle it actually switches the motors off which is a bit of a pain because if you're in flight and you throttle all the way back, the motors will switch off. So you'll have to really quickly tow in or tow out to get the motors back up and running and throttle up again. So that's just something that um, I've noticed. Uh, the forums also did mention something about um, using the curves differently so that it didn't actually go all the way down to flight idle um, on your controller. So that's something that I'm going to look at. Um, that concludes the introduction and configuration. Um, I hope you found this useful for the Mini X and uh, I hope you enjoy using it uh, when you go out and fly. I know I am. Thanks.